What's up YouTube and welcome back for another episode of Homebrew Subaru. I don't have much of an episode today, but uh, what I wanted to do is actually do the first oil change on the wagon uh, since the engine's been built. I probably have maybe about, I don't know, 1,000 or 1,200 kilometers on that now. And uh, it seems to have broken in well, so I'm going to drop the oil out of it. The first thing i got to do is hopefully this thing will crank over and start, uh, which it did during the, the middle of the week because I was able to yank the gold 240 back from its parking spot to there. Uh, the wheels are they didn't break loose it's they're still locked up so either I'm gonna have to take them off and take off the brakes or just start peeling the parts off of it there and then because uh, I, I kind of want to get it into the driveway so I can peel the transmission out of it but um, if I have to do it there maybe I will maybe I'll leave the tranny in it and just take the rear end I don't know but yeah, I want to get the wagon over into the driveway and up on ramps so I can ch drop the oil out of it. So I just want to give it a general look over and change the oil and uh, then actually vacuum it out because um, the winter months are starting to come and really the car hasn't been cleaned since I took it, you know, since I put the motor in it. So um, go with that and then see where the video takes us. First, let's see if I can get this thing to actually start. So I don't know if you could hear how slow cranking the, the, the starter motor was, but I mean that, that battery's so borderline, I, I think if we go into cold temperatures it's not going to actually last, so probably going to have to change it at some point before I start driving this thing.
I'll get the oil dropped out of her. So this is the main reason I wanted to change the oil. Uh, pretty much, you know, I, I, I've got a used STI block with some used single overhead cam heads uh, with some new pistons and new rings. Uh, one of the pistons has one old ring on it. There's a mix match in there. And uh, generally when you, when you put something like that back together, uh, a lot of initial friction starts to happen as things start to break in again. And you want to get that, that oil back out of the engine. You don't want to leave it in there for a long period of time. Wh what happens is, is it circulates with the oil. And even though it's broken down to very fine particles, it, it'll build up on the bearings. And uh, that excessive material on the bearings um, eventually causes issues. and not necessarily contact contact with the crank but if more material starts to build up in the same area uh, you, you start to get lines in the bearing and lines in the journal of the crank and basically that's when bad things start to happen so you want to keep uh, your oil as clean as possible obviously and putting together any mixed matched engine or something that you've had apart and back together it's good to initially change the oil after so many kilometers or miles just to get that all that crud and dirt and broken down metal material back out of it and more or less a flush. Now when I first started this thing I had an oil pump problem pumped out all the oil onto the floor so some of the initial stuff already got put out but uh, I you know after about a thousand kilometers maybe a little bit more than that put onto the car now I uh, definitely wanted to drop the oil again and just doing Tyler's car last weekend I decided to do it so here is the oil and we're we got it sitting in the sunlight so it should be rather easy to see and it I mean you might be able to see tiny sparkles in it but as as we get tossing the oil around and really mixing it up you get to start seeing this metallic wave through the oil and that's basically a lot of met metallic material that's, that's built up in it. You can see the shimmer coming through here. Um, that, that has a lot of met metallic deposits in it. And if that was on an old used engine, you kept on seeing your oil drain out like that, you'd eventually expect some problems. Um, but the next change I can expect probably less material and about probably by the third one I won't see any anymore just you know runny black oil like usually comes out of an engine I'm glad to get that out of there I've got some fresh oil to put back in just some cheap stuff because I'll probably run it for not too long and then do a change with some more expensive oil to keep it long term because I generally don't go uh, full rounds of mileage on my oil I because I'm hard on the engine I like to change it early so now that that's all finished, uh, I want to scan the car. The check engine light did actually come on yesterday. I went for a nice highway cruise and it was really sunny out. I hammered on it on the way back and uh, the car just, it's got so much power, it moves so quick. Uh, but I think between shifts, the check engine light set and uh, I didn't know, really notice any power loss or anything to do with anything. It just, the light came on and I want to make sure that it's, I think it has something to do with the map sensor sensing too much boost, uh, but I want to be sure that's what it is before uh, you know driving it too much more. Could be the knock sensor set to code again. Who really knows? I don't know if you guys can get a good listen to what the exhaust sounds like. You can see how rich I'm running at idle. So I've got my little mini scanner and I just need to pull down the OBD2 connector here. And we'll get into a quick little code read to see what's being stored. So I've gone into current codes, there's nothing stored in current codes, so it's already set to history. Yep, 
Yeah. P0108 manifold pressure sensor circuit malfunction high input, which basically means that map sensor saw a boost. Too much boost. So all I'm going to do is clear the codes. I was thinking of pulling the the intercooler off and cleaning the throttle body and possibly putting in the spring wire but I don't have a lot of time left in the day because I'm going out tonight and I was thinking of leaving some stuff out till tomorrow but I don't think the weather's going to be very nice tomorrow it's supposed to rain pretty hard uh, so I should probably just pull off the intercooler that goes pretty quick and at least give the check the throttle body and see if it's actually you know dirty around the bore because I had a lot of uh, blow by and oil come out of the intercooler I think I mean it might just be a waste of time but just to pull off the intercooler and check it out it only takes me 10 minutes so I think that's where I'm gonna go next I'm starting to wonder if maybe the, th the bore of the throttle body is a little bit worn. It's actually got a little lip. Yeah, that's what's going on. That throttle body starting to wear out. It's from me snapping the throttle shutter. <laughs> um, possibly the stop is just a tiny bit worn as well. So I don't know, we might do a little adjustment here. Just a tiny little adjustment. So all I've done is made just a very tiny, tiny throttle cable adjustment. Not even, just to take a little bit of the tension from resting it right on the stop. And that should just lift the, the throttle plate, maybe a couple thousandths of an inch. And that'll, you know, cause a little bit of an air gap there and should bring up my idle. And because I think I'm at the lower limit of what the IAC motor can control, and it's not allowing enough bypass air through because it's not actually getting enough initial air from the throttle body to keep the, keep the idle up. And that's understandable. I mean, I've got, I'm running a very rich system, a um, lot of fuel going through. So I think doing this is going to compensate for the problem. And I'm ready to sit the intercooler back on. And I don't think I'll go for a drive quite yet, because I'm going to take it out later tonight for sure.
but uh, I'd like to actually bust out the vacuum and give it a good vacuum and uh, cleaning on the inside, you know, wipe down the dash and whatnot. Nice clean car is always nice to drive. So yeah, just doing that little throttle cable adjustment uh, really changed the idle, obviously. Uh, but when I restarted it, the car started hunting up for idle. And I realized just giving it that little bit of bypass air past the throttle plate has changed what the IEC's learned to do. So I just uh, hooked up the scan tool again. There was no code set, but do, still doing an, an ECU clear will clear a lot of the learning parameters. And then starting the car again, uh, you know, it hunted for idle for a couple, couple, couple seconds it seemed, and then it's right now it's hovering around 750, and uh, a lot more throttle response than it had, and uh, letting it throttle up and then uh, decel back down to idle, it uh, it doesn't doesn't idle past down 500, which is what what was happening before. It just maintains about 700 to 750. So I think uh, a lot of the drive drivability was caused probably because of the throttle body. Um, but I don't want to say that 100% for sure. And I think also the, uh, w you know, there was still maybe a check valve issue. So I'm going to have to look into that further later. Um, but I, you know, I'm, it's getting a little bit later into the afternoon. I think what I'm going to do is, is give the car a good cleaning, a good wash, or not a good wash, but a good cleaning on the inside of vacuum and wiping down all the windows and the, you know, vacuum the whole thing out. So it's the following day, following morning actually, and uh, this video is not going to be a whole lot longer because I slept in this morning. But as you can see, uh, this is generally what it looks like here. Lots of rain, and uh, yesterday being as sunny as it was, is... Uh, you know, you got to take advantage of those days while you're, when you live in here. Um, but this is typical, a typical day. And, I mean, it could be the middle of January and it would be like this. This morning I actually got to take some more cardboard out of the Forester, put it into the wagon and take it to the recycling center because we don't have recycling pickup here. And it's been a pain in the ass, but I've, I've probably already made like I don't know, three loads over the past couple weekends, just slowly taking it. And the Forester's not insured yet, and I was kind of planning to just drive it over and do it all in one shot, but uh, I'm probably going to go get a coffee this morning too. And I was thinking, well, the, the wagon's pretty filthy, and even though it's raining, you'd think it would be rinsed off. Uh, I'll probably go take it for a quick car wash as well. So yeah, I'm just going to load some cardboard and head to the recycling center first so here I'm at the recycling center uh, this is kind of just like a little drop-off spot because the place isn't actually open yet and they are on they are open today on Sunday today is Sunday and I don't generally like to have people I can't drop off this much cardboard or this type of cardboard or because it's got this kind of uh, duct tape on the cardboard I just like to drop off the cardboard and be out. So that's what I'm about to do. done uh, the car has been driving absolutely awesome uh, it's idling around 500 right now so it's fairly low idle but it's not it's not dropping and, and causing that semi stall issue um, last night I stomped on it on the way home from a friend's house and uh, I hit fuel cut going into fifth gear or leaving fourth and uh, of course the car just lunges forward because I was on the power pretty hard. The check engine light's on again. So I'm pretty sure that map sensor seeing boost and I'm gonna have to do something about it if I really wanna go wide open throttle with the car because uh, it's gonna happen periodically and I don't wanna be hitting fuel cut. So next I think I'm gonna whip over to 
didn't bother car washing it, but I think I'm going to do a quick wash on it. And uh, I might bring it back home and do a quick wipe down of the dash. I did actually vacuum the car out yesterday while it was still sunny outside. So the carpets and mats and seats are all nice and clean, but the dash is really dusty. The center console and the instrument panel. And so I've gotten to the self-serve car wash and I am ready to pop in a couple bucks. It should only take me a couple bucks because there's already lots of water on the car. I can probably start with soap. I think I'm just going to go home, give the dash and console and door panels a quick wipe down, get rid of some of the dust in here, and kind of finish up with the outro. So yeah, I'm back at home, and uh, I've got this... I bought a great big jug of this concentrated cleaner. It's pretty much purple power, but if you've ever heard of purple power, but it's blue. Uh, does an amazing job. And I pretty much use it everywhere in a couple different uh, concentrations. Wow, this dash is filthy. It's been a while. So yeah, this is gonna be the end of the video. And uh, I know it wasn't much of a video. Hopefully I get something better for next week or the middle of the week. I uh, have some bigger projects that I have going on right now. So I'm trying to trying to get this rear driveway, the rear driveway coming up to the back of the garage figured out and what kind of time I need to take off to do it. And at the same time, I'm planning on building a new uh, gaming and editing uh, PC rig mostly for gaming. I'm thinking of doing a second YouTube channel for for gaming and uh, so I kind of want to build more of a 4k setup and uh, the old machine I mean it does it does editing really well but it certainly can't do 4k editing and it's getting to the point where the RAM gets so maxed out that uh, you know going over five or 
five or eight minute clips. Uh, a lot of lag in the system when you're trying to edit. And I'm, I'm sure it's to do with the RAM, even though it has 12 gigs of RAM. Uh, this new machine I'm planning, that's gonna probably have 32 gigs of RAM, so. Uh, the old machines lasted quite a few years, but it's, it's time to upgrade, time to do another one. So I've got lots of other stuff going on and uh, I, I just can't, I don't have the time to spend on, on the car stuff right now. I really got to do uh, some other things inside my house and around the house. But if you like this video, definitely give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please consider hitting that subscribe button for me. Leave your questions and comments further down below. And I'll see you in the next one.